We're easing into the next arc. Pokemon fans, we're here to talk about episode 68 of Pokemon Horizons, and like I mentioned, we are easing in to the next arc, okay? This was a very solid first episode uh, for the fourth season, right? I don't vibe with the opening as of yet. I might give it another chance. Obviously, I'm, I'm behind the three episodes still, so I'm hoping that I, I can vibe with it in the next couple episodes. If not, it's done, okay? I don't... I, I'm sorry, but the season threes... Uh, opening was hype as fuck, so I don't know if this one's gonna be able to match it. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> but outside of that, okay, because that's just an irrelevant point. <laughs> Doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But the episode was fine. I love seeing the gang again. Everybody's back to, you know, being friends. The Brave Asagi's here. I just want to say the only location that seemed like it got an upgrade was Murdoch's kitchen, okay? Molly got a cabinet. Oreo has a bigger wheel, I guess, for car cool. I don't know. Uh, Freed has a button that does something that we're gonna eventually see, because you know, they didn't just put it there. It's gonna eventually have some meaning or importance, right? Um, and then like everything else just looked the same. I don't know. I don't I don't see the upgrade of the Brave Asagi yet. Hopefully they'll actually show us in future episodes while we adventure out that there's something interesting here. But as I mentioned uh, in the last episode review, we are officially stated to be going to Kirikami, okay? Which means we're gonna see uh, Carmine and... Actually, they only showed, at least in the opening, you only see Carmine and, and Briar. I don't think they, that we're gonna see Kiering at any point, uh, or at least they're not showing that he's involved. Um, but hopefully we get like Ogre Pond. Okay, I like Ogre Pond. Maybe the, the Loyal Three. We get some 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 mystery stuff in there. I saw Perrin in the opening, which means she's gonna be involved in some way, shape, or form. I gotta admit, I don't really care too much about Perrin because I don't really interact with her too much in the games. I didn't even do the, the mission to get her soul in the Blood Moon, so that's probably why I don't really care too much about her. Because I'm not really a completionist in terms of the Pokedex. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a competitor battle at heart, so... And while Blood Moon is very strong, it ain't my cup of tea. So, I ain't even bothering with it. <laughs> but listen, just some highlights I want to throw in there. But, I'm really looking forward to this next arc. And I love what they did. I really like what they did with the six heroes, or at least the three that we have. You know, Lapras, Galarian Moltres, and Arbaliva. I really like what they did with them. Where essentially they're like, fight me, bitch. <laughs> they literally called the kids out like, fight me. Well, actually, actually, scratch that. Tropicals egg them on, okay? Let's be clear here. Tropicals was, was like calling out to them like, hey, the kids are back and they're powerful as fuck. Uh, fight me, <laughs> fight them. Or something. I'm, it's, Tropicals literally called them out and then they were like, let's go. <laughs> and I love the fact that, okay, the only one that, that doesn't really work is Galarian Moltres because technically speaking it's a dark flying type. But like Lapras is a water ice type, so water, which goes against Dot and, and Quack's Wool, right? And then Arbaliva, who's a normal grass type, well, obviously, Florigato's there. So, like, the, like I guess, technically speaking, regular Moltres, it's a fire type, so you can kind of give them that, like, oh, okay, well, you're kind of a fire type, right? Or you're, you're, you're similar enough to a fire type, so you get Crockler, okay? <laughs> but the battles themselves were great. I, I'm not usually a big fan when they do this whole, like, Oh, there's multiple fights going on at the same time and they have to like keep jumping around between them all. But for the most part, I think this one was fairly handled well. The fact that the Freed and the, and the adults were able to react to each individual one, they actually gave them time to react to what was happening in each individual arena. That might actually justify a little bit of why they did it this way. But they all did great, okay? I, I think it's a little weak. I do gotta say, like, Roy, like, he didn't, he didn't do much. Like, don't get me wrong, when he went, like, when he, like, started, like, getting some advantage, like, they did show it off, but for the most part, it just felt like Galarian Moltres was doing its fiery wrath shit, and, like, Crocolar couldn't even move. Like, the only one that was actually zooming all over the place was 
uh, Quack's fault because it was literally like causing everything to be frozen by Lapras, so it was like like circling all over the freaking place. And oh, Florigato did some stuff in there. I'm not gonna lie, like she she did she did the whole like loop de loop on on our believers like the fuck is it called? Like, it's it's an arm. I know it's supposed to symbolize an arm, but it's like a branch because I believe it doesn't have hands or arms. It's just like a fucking tree, right? So <laughs> it, it grabbed a hold of it and like was able to use acrobatics for it. And they actually showed off like the Soul Seeder thing, which is this ability, which it makes it summon grassy terrain and stuff like that. But overall, everything was good. Like I wish thought that Dot was able to get a couple other hits in before they started going at it because it was just acrobatics all over. Well, not the actual move acrobatics, but like just jumping all over the place just until a lot person froze the whole fucking area, right? So I kind of wish that they had done a little bit more there, but it's all good. It's all cool. Um, and I also love the fact that they all terrestrialized at the same time. Everyone was fucking, yeah! Everyone was fucking hype, like, yeah, they're terrestrialized. Let's fucking go. It was hilarious. And then, like, the funny thing is, they did that, right? They all terrestrialized, and they all had, like, this fucking power boost. We had liquidation of Quaxwell, uh, flame charge with with uh, Crocolor and then magical leave with Florigato and they all like did this like big ass burst and then like they hit their opponents and then each of the, of the fucking heroes was like word <laughs> and then like they go back they they didn't take a single damage okay they they tank that shit and they're like you got it we'll give you this <laughs> we'll give you this one and then they all go back to the inch of balls and I'm like. You fuckers could have mopped the floor with them. You would just, I mean, I know that it was all supposed to be like a test to see if they've actually grown and improved and gotten stronger, but at least, I feel like they were just mocking them like, yeah, you might be stronger, but you still can't handle us. <laughs> so we're just gonna say, hey, you're doing good. Catch you next time. And then dip. <laughs> like, bro, these fucking heroes are trolls. <laughs> Even our believe had a smirk on its face. I saw it. I saw that fucking look. <laughs> These guys are funny. I I, I kind of miss this. I, I I'm literally looking forward to this next journey that we're going in. Um, I hope they do Kitakami justice because I I really like that art in the games. Okay, honestly, it's probably like besides Arvin's storyline, I think Kitakami is like my favorite part of the game. Everything that happened there in the story that they did, it's probably my favorite part about Scarlet and Violet. I I actually. I don't think I've ever talked about how I felt about the DLCs because I didn't. When I made my review, I did. I hadn't purchased them, so I haven't actually said my thoughts on the on the DLC. So I might make that a stream. I'll think about it. I'll think about it for you. All. Maybe not this week. Next week. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's just fun. Um, I I'm glad to see everybody's back. They did the whole like like cheer and and it was just nostalgic. Is good. All the gang is here. They're finally ready to go. Like all the Pokemon are here. Actually, now that, that, that reminds me. That, okay, that, there is one thing I didn't want to talk about when it comes to like the residents of the of the ship. We got three new Tatsugiri that showed up, and Crocodile was gonna eat one, and then they got assaulted and they started running all over the fucking place. I'm a little confused why Tatsugiri is here. Like why this Pokemon in particular, considering the fact that it doesn't really work unless you like. Pair it up with Dondozo, which is the whole gimmick behind Tatsugiri. But I'm hoping that this leads to something, okay? Every other Pokemon on this ship at least has... I don't want to say redeeming qualities, because that's not really what I'm talking about. They've had a purpose up to this point. So, I'm hoping that they give them a reason to exist here, right? And not just be like this one throwaway gag and love this episode coming back. I hope they actually show up multiple times and we see them actually contributing to stuff on the ship. But that's gonna be it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, we're doing this shit daily <laughs> until we catch up. I think I'm three episodes behind at this point, right? Um, not count, well, okay, today's Wednesday when I'm recording this, right? Because I've recorded them one day ahead of time so that I can upload it for later. Um, so that means that I'll technically be behind another day because by the time I'm caught up, then the next episode will be out already. So, unless I took a break. Are you taking a break this week? You know, I'm gonna look at that later. We're not gonna talk about it here. <laughs> but I'm basically hoping that by the end of this weekend, I'll be completely caught up with the series, which means I'll be able to go back to weekly uploads for you all. 
Um, but that's going to be it for this episode review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave thoughts and comments in the comments section below. I have been your voice, host, Croxton, and I will see you guys in future videos, streams, shorts, everything in between. Oh, 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 oh,